waterboarding on a planetary scale. Sounds like a hell of a bright future to me. The Colony, also known as Tides, is brought to us by director Tim Felbaum and stars Nora Arnzetter and Ian Glenn. So the premise here is in the not too distant future, we humankind are gonna continue fucking everything up here on the world. And after a series of pandemics, ecological events, and climate change, our world is no longer habitable for us. So of course, we as humans do what we do when we're done with something and we throw that shit away and move on to the next thing. That's right, we look to the stars, leave this bitch behind to go to our side planet, Kepler-1. But not everything everybody though. According to the opening crawl, just the ruling elite got to go to salvation. Now two generations later, we're wondering, hey, you know this place we're at Kepler, I mean it's, you know, it's maintained us I guess, but it's not really that great of a place. I wonder how that last place we were at is. Maybe it's healed enough and we can go back. Oh yeah, and by the way, all the people on Kepler can now not reproduce. Not really sure if that started when they got there or if it happened throughout the years or what, but all I know is that right now, people on Kepler, all the fucking in the world, you ain't getting no kids. This poses a problem. So so they start to send expeditions down to the blue planet to see if everything's worked itself out now. Can we get back home and live there where you know there's water, breathable air, and reproduction? Well, when the first expedition is lost, a few years later, we send a second expedition to check on things. And this is the expedition we follow in this movie. And Blake, our main character, played by Nora Arnzetter, is one of the astronauts that we follow throughout the film. And what she discovers is interesting. Apparently, water has started to take the world back over. And while there is dry land, I guess, Every single day, it floods totally out. Yeah, the tide comes in and everything turns into an ocean and they just gotta wait that shit out on boats until it goes away and they got land for a little while later. By the way, speaking of that they, she also discovers that human beings did persevere. There are still people here on Earth. They're not necessarily the way we left them though. They've regressed a bit and they're kind of tribal now. So now it's up to Blake to figure out what happened to the crew that came here before her and is this planet actually habitable for the people from Kepler? All right, first things first, I gotta say that this movie looks amazing. And a main reason is, is because a vast majority of the stuff that we see on screen is practical. Yes, even the floods and everything. Apparently a great deal of this movie was filmed in the German Tidelands. And there, there's a natural phenomenon that twice a day the tides come in and just wipe everything out. Like it's total dry land. I mean, it's wet as fuck, but it, it's land you can walk on and then all of a sudden within minutes just the, it turns into a fucking ocean. This really added to the movie and made it look fantastic. Never did it look fake. I was even watching it thinking, man, this looks amazing. So when I looked it up and found out that, yeah, it looks so good because the shit was real, I wasn't very surprised. But even beyond that, everything in this movie looks really good, like in kind of a Mad Max shitty kind of way. Now make no bones about it, this earth is fucked up in this movie, but it looks really good or bad but like in a good way. You know what I mean, right? There is a bit of CGI here or there when it's needed and all that looks really good, but the vast majority of what we see is real. There's probably some compositing going on here or there, but what's composited is a real thing. And that just brought a real weight and gravity to everything that we saw. The movie's also shot really good. The cinematography here is top notch. This is absolutely sci-fi, but it's very realistic, believable sci-fi. Now from a narrative standpoint, this movie is really interesting as well. I really like the direction that they went. It's not non-stop action or anything. We do get a few scenes here or there, but the vast majority of it is about them exploring this world, exploring what's happening and what's going on. Figuring out this mystery of how these people have survived on this dead planet for all these generations, and how some of them seem a bit more advanced than others do. While we do eventually get somewhat of an antagonist, for a great deal of the film, the antagonist is just the environment. There's constant dangers. You never know when the flood's coming. There's fog fucking everywhere, so you can't really see that far off. There could be an army of people over there just waiting to rip you apart and you don't know it until you're right up on them. There's life forms all over the place and not many of them are very hospitable. Some of them are left behind from the tide and they couldn't keep up with the water. And these particular life forms are kind of pissed off about not being in water anymore. Just the entire environment that these characters are in is dangerous at all times. There's a constant feel of dread like they never know what's going to happen. They could die at any minute. This helped keep the tension up for the film even during the slower parts. And yeah, there are some slower parts because this isn't an action fest. 
this movie takes its time to figure out what's going on. These aren't like military personnel or anything. As I said a moment ago, they are exploring, they're looking, they're checking on the planet, they're taking samples and things like that. They're trying to figure out the mystery of not just this world, but can their people from the world they've been on for generations now come back to this world and survive? And while there are quite a few slow parts to the film, I really enjoyed them. They were really interesting. The very believable and convincing performance we get from Nora Arnzetter really helped as well. You're on board with this character. You're ready to follow her. And she does have a few more layers than someone who's just there to do science. She has a backstory. She has her own ulterior motives for coming here. And while there is this unknown mystery unfolding before her, and she does have to make some decisions concerning that, she also has to constantly take into account the well-being of her people. That is her primary job. That is why she's here. And the two goals don't always line up, and that leads to some interesting conflict. Now, the movie looks fantastic. It's shot really interesting. It has some great performances, and the narrative is really intriguing and keeps you invested and makes you want to know what's going on. You want to go on this journey. But, and you probably knew that there would be a but, not all is perfect here. Beyond the fact that, yes, there are some slow parts in this film, and even though I did really enjoy these parts of the movie, I get that they're not gonna be for everybody. Our narrative, while very interesting, takes some strange turns closer to the end of the film. At one point, the really well thought out thought-provoking story kind of de-evolves a bit right there at the end. I'm not going to ruin it, but just know that right there close to the end, our protagonist gains some new information. And really this whole last about 10 minutes of the movie just kind of started to get real shaky. It never totally fell apart, but I feel like they were having a hard time putting a cap on this thing. I think they wanted to have kind of a big ending, and they didn't know exactly how to do that, so we got this instead. Stuff happens and the movie presents it like it's this big thing, but there's a lot of holes and stuff there. Compared to the rest of the movie, the last 10 minutes or so just seemed very slapdash. There are things that characters learn that other characters who clearly should have said these things a few minutes earlier just don't, and the only reason would be to kind of set us, the audience, up for this big reveal that's not really that big of a deal. Also, the conflict that comes up in the last few minutes of the movie doesn't really make a lot of a sense if you start to think about it. Without ruining anything, there's a character that wants to do a thing. And our other characters suddenly are like, oh no, we can't let this character do this thing. The thing is, this thing that the character wants to do that our main characters don't want them to do is a thing that our main characters have been wanting to do. It doesn't make any fucking sense. It's like these two sides are on the same side, but they're still arguing about shit. And I know it's not that the main character's motivations changed because after this thing, they talk about doing the thing. It just doesn't make a lot of sense and starts to really fall apart under the slightest bit of scrutiny. And it really pulled me out of the movie. They totally had me up to that point. I was really interested in what was going on. But the fact that they de-evolved from this well thought out and paced story to this kind of just schlock fest right there at the end really turned me off. Now ultimately, I did enjoy the story, I guess. And as I said, it didn't totally fall apart in the end, but it was real damn close. That structure was really shaky there in the end. Like somebody fart next to it and that bitch is coming the fuck down. Needless to say, while I really enjoyed the movie, the ending did leave quite a bit to be desired. Guys, The Colony, for the most part, was a really great movie. Up until about that last 10 minutes, I had a great time with this movie. It looks fantastic fucking fantastic. It's got really good performances with believable, likable characters. And the story is intriguing and engaging until you get to that last part. Unfortunately, the ending is just really disappointing and seems so rushed. And even though that ending did kind of leave a sour taste in my mouth, it doesn't change the fact that the rest of the movie was really great. And because of that, it is absolutely worth a rent. All he wanted was hey, this with a better ending, this movie would have absolutely been worth a buy. It didn't even need a big ending. I didn't need some big bombastic ending like they tried to make happen. I just needed a solid, satisfying ending. And unfortunately, while that's not what we get, this movie is still absolutely worth checking out, if nothing else for the visuals. This movie is gorgeous in kind of a fucked up, ugly way. So if you're looking for an interesting, deliberately paced sci-fi for the night, then check out The Colony, and I think you'll have a really good time with it. So there it is, guys, my review of The Colony, or Tide 
guides depending on where you live. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below and become a jarhead and get some of the awesome benefits that go along with that like these guys. And maybe join my top tier and become a bad motherfucker like my man Greg. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Kepler. All right, can we talk about titles for a minute? This movie's original title is Tides. That's the title it had over in Europe and everywhere else it was released first. When making its way here to the States, now it's called The Colony. Well, I guess that title can kind of fit. It in no way, shape, form, or fashion is as good as the title Tides. That and the fact that there's like 15 other movies and shows called The Colony or Colony or something like that. It's just gonna get lost in all the other colonies. They should have just left it as Tides. Sometimes I get a name change, but I do not get it all why they changed this movie from Tides to The Colony. On one hand, you've got Tides, an interesting title that makes you say, huh, I wonder what that's about. It's an interesting title. It doesn't say exactly what the movie's about, and there's not 52 other movies with the same name. I want to look into that. And on the other hand, you had fucking basic as hell vanilla ice cream name. The Colony, that just sounds really fucking boring. Why change it? I don't get it. I understand that everybody thinks that we're just too fucking stupid, and that's why they change the title sometimes, but I feel fairly confident that the vast majority of people in the United States know what the fuck a tide is. We didn't need a name as basic as the colony. The vast majority of people over here know basic English. We could... Ah, uh, there it is. Okay, now it makes sense. I still think it's a dumbass change, but I kind of get it.